This is an island called Lot 8 on the River Thames just by Kew Bridge. And it's about an acre and a quarter, and it's been disused for about seven years. Uh, as you can see, it comprises four docks, two dry docks and two wet docks, um, one wreck and various outbuildings. We've been living here for about just over a fortnight, uh, partly because we have a lot of work to do and it's sort of too far to commute the other side of London from Bow. Um, also for our own site security and also because we have to work around the tides. Um, sometimes, some jobs we can only do at three or four o'clock in the morning because the tides aren't right any other time. We have to keep moving boats and pontoons around or moving stuff from the shore. And as you can see, this has been our living space, living and working space. We're sort of fairly well appointed, really. We have barbecue, oven, television, radio for the world service. We have notions about the show, but I, I mean, like with all the Gamelan big performances, I mean, it's, it's very dependent on what suggestions are made by the site. And obviously, there's a lot of aerial rig here because it's so handy to hang stuff. Also, there's nowhere to it's, stand. It's also there's a lot of pontoons around because a lot of because we realised there wasn't really a stage. It's just a lot of water. So we've been hustling around boatyards and getting pontoons. We've actually resurrected a pontoon, which took a. A two-day job of it had been underwater for seven years, and we spent two days digging the mud out and getting rid of the eels and floating it up. It's the first time we're actually going to be working with quite a few people with us um, on the technical side, and that's what's been interesting about working here. Is we found people who a know the island from before and b have an interest in the river, and so that's, for instance, how we got told of the steam was. There's a chap, Tom Ledley, who lives fairly nearby. Lovely steam was used. And this is our, this is our piece de resistance. This will be it's an enormous singing away. 50 PSI. There's another chap who'll be, um, who's helped us to resurrect the compressed air and the enormous machine in that shed. It's basically a hammer, a power hammer. And this is a 500. 500 weight um, block here. At a certain moment, we'll be feeding <coughs> scaffold bars through lengths of timber. So you get this kind of very loud, continuous um, beat. It also makes a sort of breathing sound as the compressed air comes in. So it kind of, it's almost like it's catching its breath and then goes. <laughs> We were budgeted for £3,000 of pyrotechnics um, for the three shows because we've been working on the idea of combining the, the pyrotechnics as a sort of a musical element rather than a sort of a, a visual backdrop, whatever. And one of the things we've been doing is using a lot of pyrotechnic whistles along with the steam whistles and the vacuum cleaner whistles. And what we've got hanging out there are the whistling vacuum cleaners. They've been sort of mic'd up with all sorts of bits and pieces that Anne's found. And rather than sucking, they blow to create a sound. On the pontoons down here, we've got two barrelophones, which are basically beer barrels found out the river, put on stands. This is going to be an enormous glass chime. It's about 100 sheets of glass of different sizes and thicknesses. Um, We've laid it out on the pontoon so that we can manoeuvre it at high tide into position, put a T-bar through the, the top scaffold clamp, block and tackle it up, and then we're going to have a wind machine position, which has got different speeds, so you can get um, like a real soft, tinkly little sound, as though it's just a breeze, and then you can get a really violent wind through it, so you're getting a real sort of smashing and clattering of glass. A lot of people say that the show and other shows that we do look remarkably dangerous. In fact, they're no more dangerous than any other human activity. Uh, I mean, changing a plug is dangerous. Um, dropping an iron bar on your foot is dangerous. Uh, it's, it's no more dangerous than working in a factory, working at home, driving a car. Um, it's unfamiliarity with materials that's dangerous. 
And at the back here, you've got a whole series of um, cabinets that were found, or lockers that were found in the workmen's sheds here. And the idea is this will create white noise in that they will be um, shot at with a fireman's hose. At the first night we tried it, it was only me on the end, and I was on a slippy pontoon down there, and I just lost it, and the thing sort of waved around like some sort of cartoon snake, you know, chasing me. And these will be yawning and spilling the smoke out, and at the same time possibly coming out through the waterfall area in Dock 1. We've got a waterfall rigged up. Where that guy is sitting up there is we've got a waterfall right across, which is going to make a, a waterfall from the the roof down to the water line and we're going to um, add aniline dye to that so we get a red waterfall. We wanted to end up with it looking as if the island is on fire and the sheds have gone up and stuff which we're doing with um, propane filled gas balloons, f flares, coloured smokes and um, paraffin soaked rags. Basically, you have a, a weather balloon which is inflated with propane gas and they're electrically detonated uh, from a distance. And what you do is you just send up these great sort of, sort of nap arm effect um, flames and they rise as a big sort of mushrooming shape, which will look very good because the tide will be in and you'll get this kind of orange reflection in the water. Well, our sleeping and camping area, we've kind of just about given up on. <laughs> it seems to be completely submerged in rain. Bits of um, flame has fallen on it. And I think we basically feel that we're so exhausted, we're going to sleep wherever, so it really doesn't matter. And as long as there's some bread and cheese back there, we'll kind of get through the next few days. I think we're looking at a crew of about seven or eight yeah, on this yeah. one. I mean, there'd be us three, but... Um, like with all the Gamelan performances, it's mainly the instruments that, that do the performing, and it's just us lot as technicians running around, hoping to keep the thing going.
Thank you.